Hello and welcome to another episode of Game Hammer Extra, the show where we talk about anything that doesn't fit with the main Game Hammer reviews. So today what I've got is what may well be the final pickups video for quite a while because let's face it we're all talking about uh, having to tighten our belts, cost of living and all of that so kind of been ramping down but we have a few choice items and I want to share them with you today. So let's get straight into it. So, first of all, something that I had my eye on for quite a while in a local well, stationery shop. It's a bit weird that it's in a stationery shop, but here we are. It's an Orb retro handheld console. Includes over 150 8-bit games. I'm not convinced they're actually 8-bit games. Some of the graphical quality looks a little bit like it might be 16-bit instead. Might be a TurboGrafx-16 situation, you know, 16-bit graphics uh, system, but 8-bit processor. So I've actually opened this already. I've cut it open. We've got all kinds of stuff in here about what it is. So let's get this out and have a look at some of the screens on the back. As you can see from the back, if this is 8-bit, then it's console-style 8-bit with the enhanced features of that. But the games themselves, for the most part, they're, well, have you ever seen a pop station? You know, those LCD rip-off systems where they're not very good. It's kind of like that, but there are some choice ones on here. I'm going to turn it on. You'll hear just how bad the music is. Yeah. So I'll turn that down. You have to press this little button on the side. It's got uh, several volume levels. It will, if you press reset, go straight back to playing the music and it will do that whenever you change a game. So we've got a couple of games on here that are worth talking about. I'm trying to bring it up to find out what they were called. Star Battle, I think that was one. This is basically a horizontal scrolling shooter. A vertically scrolling shooter in it. You can't really see it on here so I'm going to show a few... Uh, I'll get a bit of footage and put it here. So there you go, that's that, and it's it's all right. It's, uh, the instructions are practically non-existent. And I have a feeling that I've actually got all these games again on a little other system I've got. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure this is the same. Oh my goodness, they have an iPhone dock that looks like a, a Ghetto Blaster from the 80s. So yeah, they're really going all in on the uh, retro stuff. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I've got all of these games on, um, I want to say mouse mat, but it's not. It's like a dance mat. It's a floor mat where the controller is the mat. I'm pretty sure they're all the same. We're going to have a Game Hammer review where we review this. And then probably later on we'll do the mat as well when I find time to actually find some space to plug the thing in. It's big. It's a dance mat. I can't fit it in this office. It's one of those system situations. Other thing I picked up at the same time, get yourselves one of these. These are from Poundland in the UK. Vido Office Wireless Mouse. Only costs about three quid. It's not the cheapest mouse I've ever had. The cheapest one is a pound and I've actually got that attached to my laptop at the moment. But this is very good for taking with you if you need to travel. So it's a mouse but the little dongle for the Bluetooth attachment is inside the the place where the battery compartment is so you just slide it in. It's a really good design. I bet Jen said that she was sure that some engineer was patting themselves on the back over that one and yeah they probably were so it's worth having in as a travel mouse. Really lightweight, incredibly lightweight to the point where you feel like they could have put a little bit of weight in there to make it feel a bit more but it's clicky nice decent uh, scroll wheel can't complain for a couple of quid so i picked that up now the next few bits i want to talk to you about are more in line with gaming let's put it that way so what have i got well when i bought super mario galaxy 2 it was the box set version rather than just playing uh, in its uh, slipcase so we had the box version, which is supposed to come with an extra DVD, and the DVD explains how to play the game and things like that. I didn't have the DVD. Now I have, because I found a copy on uh, the internet. So yeah, I found a copy on eBay, a couple of quid. So I used a little bit of the Patreon funds to finish off the, the uh, Mario Galaxy 2 box set so that it's all ready for the museum. That's, re that's a really nice thing. Similarly, 
I got this to ages, like seriously ages ago. It's perfect condition. It's the platinum edition of Final Fantasy VIII. I got this from a charity shop ages ago, but it was missing disc one. Managed to pick up a copy of disc one. Now that is the original black label edition uh, of disc one, but it uh, works with the system and it works with the game because they're essentially the same. They just got a different label. So managed to complete a uh, copy of Final Fantasy VIII so we can now play this. Uh, I remember someone on Game Hammer Live was asking what I was going to do after we'd finished Resident Evil on the Wednesday uh, Let's Plays. I'm keeping Wednesday as Let's Plays. We're going to have a different day for other things. I don't know what that day will be, and so far I haven't actually managed to do it, but I'm kind of considering adding either a Tuesday or a Thursday show, or perhaps even if I start late, like 10 o'clock at night, which I'm not sure people would like, maybe a Monday show, but I don't think that's going to happen because I am doing the Monday Club as well on a Monday. Gotta get worn out. But Tuesday or Thursday, I'm thinking there will be an extra. We might uh, see how it goes from there. What else? Well, Simon Higgins, friend of the show, found a copy of Discworld Noir while he was uh, clearing out his attic, I think it was, so he said, and asked if I'd like it. Of course I'd like it. Discworld Noir is one that I have never played. I have played Discworld 1 and 2. They're really good games. But to have the third one... Yeah, I'm very happy to add that. Apparently this is the one that's not patched, so it'll be very interesting to see how that goes. I'm going to put that to one side. Oh, never mind. <laughs> and let's talk about the PlayStation stuff. Now, Jenny and I have been looking around for extra games to add to the PlayStation collection. It's getting very hard. We've got to 82.2% when I've added all of these in. And adding more is getting tough. Not because they're expensive. I mean, they are expensive, a lot of the games, but not all of them are expensive. Some of them are cheap. They're just not around. So the rarities still haven't uh, equated to actual cost yet in terms of uh, what's out there in PS2 land. So getting the final 18% that we need for the... Well, actually, 17.8% that we need to get a full PAL set is so hard now. But we have added a few choice items. Let's start. Shonen Jump's One Piece Grand Adventure. This is a lot of fun. I've been enjoying playing this. It's very much uh, like a brawler, but it's a cartoony brawler, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. The additional mode of like a tournament fighter is really hard as well. I've been having fun. It's a lot of fun, but my goodness, it's hard. I do recommend you give it a try if you get the chance, though. What else we got? Something that I was very, very surprised to find existed, and then once I played it, very, very surprised to find was actually really good fun. It's Harley Davidson Motorcycles Race to the Rally. Believe it or not, this is Burnout with motorbikes. Yeah, you heard me right. It's a great game. It's really, really good fun. And I've had a lot of fun playing. It's Burnout, basically, with motorbikes. And it's so good. If you get a chance, get yourself a copy of this. Especially if you're into racing games, Burnout-style games, and motorbikes. So that's not all. We also have another anime addition to the set where I knew that uh, there were extras that we didn't have in this set and we will be looking to finish the set. There's one missing. We have one, two and three and now we have Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja 5. Very busy looking cover. It's... <laughs> Well, it's the fifth one in the, the set. Well, how can I explain it? You run around uh, locations from the show and you do the Naruto run. And it's a lot of fun. But I didn't get far enough in while testing it to make sure that it worked to say whether it's good or not. Because it starts really slow. It's surprising. And I couldn't find out where I was supposed to be going. So it was hard to, hard to start. But it looks pretty damn good. And it really does feel like you're playing the cartoon. The animation, let's put it that way. People don't like it calling it a cartoon. It's a cartoon. I'm sorry, guys. Anime and cartoons, same mechanism to make them. They look the same in the end. They're all cartoons. So there you are. And I say that as a cartoonist. I make cartoons. <laughs> let's get off that before people start uh, writing horrible comments to me. Because what else do we get? Realm of the Dead. Now, this is one that I'm, I'm sad that I had to pick it up, but uh, apparently someone local to me who works in CEX uh, has sold up their collection. And Jen and I went in and bought some choice items from it. There were still a few very expensive titles in uh, CEX after we'd been, and they were all great condition. If you're looking to buy some top items in Bolton, you're in for some good stuff because it's all good condition. It's been uh, collected with care. 
but we already had all of it, all of it, except for a few choice items. And I'm going to talk to you about the three of them now. First one is Realm of the Dead. This I was surprised at. I was expecting some kind of zombie brawler. And it kind of is a zombie brawler, but it's also more like a Japanese RPG. A little, funny enough, a little like Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja 5, which I was surprised at. This is, it's by Midas, so it's one of those Midas ones that's imported rather than uh, they've found a cheap uh, local guy to do it. So it's actually not too bad. It's very much like... Um, Let's say if you crossed uh, Resident Evil with uh, Dynasty Warriors, it has that kind of feel to it. But it's very much like an RPG style. So Realm of the Dead, really good. Enjoyed playing it. I think it's one that I will have to get more into because it's pretty good. What else did we find? Well, we finally finished off the three trilogy of Project Zero. So very, very happy to add this to the set. Again, survival horror. Weird one, though, about photographs. So... It's all here, all in great condition, and I'm really looking forward to giving this a proper try. I really enjoy the uh, Project Zero series, and I want to do... Uh, it's one of the ones that's planned. I won't be going straight into another survival horror after we finish Resident Evil on GameCube during Game Hammer Lives, but I do want to go through the Project Zero set as a playthrough online, because it's a lot of fun, and I think it doesn't get as much uh, talked about as it should. So I'm really happy to add it to the set and have the trilogy of them so we can play those. But I've saved the last PS2 one. Well, <laughs> I've saved the last to last. Of course I have. But what am I talking about? I've saved the best of the, the set that we picked up to last. Ladies and gentlemen, God Hand. <laughs> Finally got a copy. I remember I almost got a copy of this years ago because uh, there was a copy for 20 quid back when it wasn't a huge, uh, hugely priced game. And it looked like someone had been smoking like 50, 60 uh, cigarettes a day right next to it. It was yellowed, it looked dog eared, it was horrible. So I didn't pick it up. This one is in perfect condition. And you know what? It was worth the wait. Have you ever played Devil May Cry? Well, imagine Devil May Cry, only without any weapons, and you're just punching people. And also, for some reason, you're now in the Wild West. That's God Hand. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> I turned it on, had a look, and went, yeah, this is the game for me. And then I played it, and it was all confirmed. It is the game for me. Great game. Get a copy. If you like that kind of brawler, you will adore this. It's so good, so stylish. But that's not everything either, because I found in a charity shop, Farming Simulator 2011 Platinum Edition. Never played Farming Simulator outside of one time. I was at, uh, and this dates me back a while, the Conservative Party conference about four, maybe five years ago, where McCain had a stall, about, and they were talking about how they make their chips. I am not kidding. <laughs> this was at the Tory Party conference, a virtual reality uh, farming simulator, and it was using farming sim, but with a, an Oculus headset, or maybe it, it might have been a Rift headset or something, it was attached to a PC, and they had the entire uh, control set for farming sim set up. So when you looked around in virtual reality and uh, went to pick uh, a lever, it was actually there in real life, and it was a great experience, so I've always liked that. I'd like to try and uh, recreate that if I can. So I've got the Oculus uh, Quest 2 now. Hopefully I can get that set up with the, the PC that I'm setting up in another room. And eventually we could get the uh, controls for Farming Sim. And then we can try it. And that will definitely be a Game Hammer episode. So I'm looking forward to trying that. But even that's not the last of what we've picked up. Found this alongside Farming Sim. Marvel Avengers Battle for Earth on Wii U. We do have a Wii U here now, and uh, when I finally get it set up, uh, that would be great. It's sat right here, it's plugged in. I can't get any signal out of it. I think I need to charge up the uh, little uh, Wii U controller and get it set up that way. I think that's what's missing, but I don't have a charger for it, so I'm waiting on one of those arriving, and we'll see how it goes. No manual, hope that I can pick it up fairly easy. So I'm looking forward to giving it a try. But what I'm really looking forward to giving a try is Mario Kart uh, 8 on Wii U. Pick this up because if there are any Wii U games that we have to have, it's Zelda Breath of the Wild, which I cannot find for love nor money. It was like, it was here for a few days and then gone. 
because uh, people went, well, clearly that's going to be uh, worth it in in a few years' time. So they've all gone, and now I can't get a copy yet. And it is worth a fair bit now. So it's like, ah, I wish I had. But, you know, these things happen. So Mario Kart 8, really enjoy Mario Kart. It doesn't have the manual, but I'm sure I can pick up how to play it. But it does have the disc in good condition. So I'm looking forward to getting the Wii U set up so I can play Mario Kart because I love it. Love the Wii version. Love the original on Super Nintendo. I have that as well. I got that when I got my Super Nintendo way back when. And I've enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to giving it a play. What else we got? Well, I think I mentioned this on Game Hammer Live. Transformers Cybertron Adventures. It's a side story from the uh, War for Cybertron series on Xbox 360, which I will get a copy of when I find it in good condition. Uh, apparently, it's the best Transformers game. Now, I have trouble believing that because I have what I think is the best Transformers game, and it's called Transformers. Where is it? This is without doubt the best Transformers game I've ever played. It's on PlayStation 2, it's just called Transformers. It has the uh, the logo of, I believe it was uh, Transformers Energon or something like that, or the Headmasters sets and things like that. This is amazing. I Seriously, it is one of the best games I've played in a very, very long time. And when you see Devastator turn up, oh my goodness, what an experience. It lives with you. So if these uh, Cybertron games can come anywhere close to that PS2 Transformers game, I will love them. So I had to get the one that's on Wii because it's a side story from that. It's on Wii. It's not, uh, from what I can tell, it's not on 360. It's designed for the Wii. So I had to have it and add it to the set. I'm going to play that uh, when I get the Wii U set up again. And we'll see how we go from there because I'm really looking forward to that. Almost through everything now. What else do we have? Well, Excite Truck. No idea how good this is. It was in a charity shop with the uh, Marvel stuff for Wii U, so I had to have it because you don't pass up the chance to get a game that you've not heard of. Let's put it that way. Looks like fairly uh, decent racing. So, yeah, I'll give that a go, and no doubt I'll enjoy it. Now, the final ones. I picked these up a while ago, and I can't remember whether I've actually mentioned them on the, on the pickups before, but I had to tell you what I found because it's ridiculous. Connect Sports. Again, had to pick it up because it was with Kinect Star Wars and everyone talks about Kinect Star Wars. Now, I don't have a Kinect for the 360 yet. I will eventually pick one up. I have one for, for what is it? Uh, it's the Xbox One Kinect and I don't plug it in. It's just sat there. <laughs> Because I don't plug it in because I don't want it uh, when I'm talking to someone while watching a show I do, or while I'm playing a game and I talk to uh, someone about uh, what I'm doing. I don't want it to pick up on what I'm saying because I know for a fact that uh, if you're playing Halo and someone says grenade <laughs> and the Kinect hears it, you will throw a grenade. Which uh, usually comes down to the joke of, uh, uh, everyone please be quiet and do not say grenade. What's that? Say grenade? <laughs> and then you lose all your grenades. I don't want that. So I'm, I'm uh, leaving it disconnected. But the third and final one that I picked up for the 360, Viva Piñata, Party Animals. I picked this up a while ago to the point where I don't even have to load it in now to play it because it came out on Games with Gold. <laughs> so yeah, it's just... Those things, but yeah, that is the set. I've picked up uh, a fair few. We've uh, got down to uh, under 18% left to pick up on the PlayStation 2 collection. I don't expect we're going to be finished anytime soon. I expect it's going to be another five years at least before we complete the set. It's just that's how it is. 17.8% uh, might seem like a lot, but it could be anything between 250 and 400 games, depending on. Uh, how many are actually out there? We don't know what the full set is. We're, I'm basing the percentages off uh, a lot of guesswork to for the final hundred or so titles. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, that's the situation. That's where we're up to. I hope you've enjoyed this. And now I'm off to uh, write the script for the next Game Hammer. Hope you have a great day. Take care of yourselves. See you later and happy gaming. Bye bye. If you like the show, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really does help create future videos. That's patreon.com slash Zoe Kirk Robinson. And I've got an extra special thanks going out to Chief89, Sam Yates, RetroMickey82, Mo Henry, and George Botterini.
Thank you so much, guys. Thank <laughs> you.